Hey everyone and welcome to a new video. Today I want to give you five travel hacks I do religiously on every trip and before any trip I take. But to my surprise, either not a lot of people know about those hacks or just don't do them. If you want to know more hacks or just exchange with other like-minded people who love traveling, if you want to know certain information or details about a certain destination, then I would like to invite you to my travel community. I just recently launched a new travel and language community called LinguaLink. Apart from languages I teach on there and bootcamps I give for different events, you also have dedicated spaces to talk about different travel destinations. Like for example, if you want to travel to Rio and so many people have questions, general questions about Rio or even specific questions about Rio, you could just go in that space and ask your question in that space of Q&A and just ask your question. And someone who is from that place or even another person who has already traveled there can answer you directly. So all of these are future of the travel community. Make sure you check it out. The link is in my bio. And the first hundred people enter for just 49 euros. For 49 euros, you can learn a language. You can join my weekly lives, my weekly events. You can join the language boot camps. Plus you get travel Q and A's. All of that for just 49 euros. I usually charge 30 per hour of just teaching a language. So this is a heck of a deal. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the bio. So I'm going to let you in on these five travel hacks you need to do before every trip. Number one is search incognito mode. If you haven't heard about incognito mode, have you been under a rug? And there are still people who look for hotels, flights in the normal browser and don't know about incognito mode. I was just recently checking flights with a friend and he didn't know what incognito mode was. I was like, you have to look for the flight in incognito mode. So what is it? Incognito mode is basically when you open up the web browser in an incognito mode. You can usually do that in the three dots on the upper right corner of every browser on Safari, on Google Chrome. So what does this incognito mode do? It basically doesn't allow websites or in general to track your search history so you can browse the web without your search history actually being recorded. You probably notice when you look for a flight, you have one price. Two hours later, you go into that same browser to look for the same flight and the prices have gone up. And that's exactly because you didn't use incognito mode. What you also want to do is once you go into the browser, you want to turn off the cookies. A lot of people don't even know what cookies are. Websites basically install cookies to track your search history, to track your every move on the website, what you're doing, your behavior on a website. So this is basically for marketing purposes. So if you don't want that, you might want to turn those cookies off. You just see a pop-up window ask you if you want the cookies. You can say no or with a lot of websites they don't let you completely click on no but you can click on just the necessary cookies. And I always do that whenever I go look for flights on Skyscanner for example. Turn off the cookies first. With those cookies like I said they're tracking your every move on the website. That's why the prices go up. You might even see that that same flight you were looking for an hour ago is all of a sudden not available anymore. Whereas when you open up an incognito window it is still available and hack number two number two is something I just started doing last year and that's volunteering I'm a slow traveler that means I stay at places for longer periods of time last in this year I stayed in Brazil for three months three to four months and then in Colombia also for two to three months also build relationships make friends and whenever I can like I go back to those places so Usually when you stay at places for longer periods of time, you kind of have to look for accommodation alternatives to hotels. You're not going to stay in a hotel for three months. So what I prefer usually is staying at Airbnbs or last year I discovered volunteering. That's basically you offering work or your services in return for accommodation. I discovered that last year through Workpackers because they hit me up basically to say, can you do this experience in Brazil? And I was in Brazil, so I did that experience and I actually met a lot of people who were doing that same thing. I've never really heard of that before. I didn't really know what it was. In a lot of hostels, people were actually working there uh, in exchange for accommodation. But you can not only do that in hostels, you can also do that at hotels. I stayed at this beautiful boutique hotel in Colombia just a couple of months ago. I stayed there for a month and in return I did their social media. I also did that for another hustle last year in Brazil. That was 
absolutely beautiful too so you basically go onto the website worldpackers.com and you can create a profile well how it works is you just look for the countries you can literally find something anywhere in the world they have every country available and you look for a volunteering opportunity in any field you like some people like to go out farming and do that but I like marketing so usually I look for marketing opportunities where I can trade in my expertise and marketing of what I do with social media creating content and so if that's an option for you for someone who wants to travel more and for longer periods of time usually they require you to stay at least two weeks or a month so that's why this is definitely something for people who travel for longer let's say two months three months but this is a great opportunity to save on accommodation because we know that flights transportation and accommodation are the most expensive things when traveling another amazing thing about this opportunity is that a lot of places you don't only get the accommodation and trade for your work but you also get breakfast with it or at some places that are a little bit remote for example you get the complete three meals you get breakfast lunch and dinner at this boutique hotel i was staying at in cartagena i got all three meals the hotel was gorgeous and i barely had any work to do honestly but it was amazing and the people i got to work with were amazing everything was beautiful so i really recommend the volunteering experience if you're looking to stay at different places or even just meet new people and you know also looking to save some money because if you travel for those longer periods of time you kind of need to look out for ways to also save and i usually stay at airbnbs for a couple of weeks and then i also like to stay at hostels because you know at hostels it's just easier to meet people and then i also like to do those volunteering opportunities so i kind of do the mixture of all three when i'm traveling and travel hack number three i don't even know if this is a real hack but i have traveled with only an online bank i don't even know how people travel with a credit card from a physical bank because this is just so much struggle like i see all the time when i travel with people who have their physical bank back at home if their phones get stolen if their cards get stolen it's so much of a hassle to just call the bank home to make them block the card and everything else speaking from my own experience when i used to travel back like six seven years ago before i got an online bank it was so annoying it was either that i had to give notice to my bank without me knowing i just traveled so they blocked my accounts i was like in another country with my bank card just blocked by a bank who just decides to block my money or like even me booking flights and they just block it things like that i know that are very common with a physical bank if you do transactions of a larger sum for example they might be deemed as suspicious and they just decide to block your account and you might be somewhere in another country and i've traveled with friends who've had that same scenario happen to them so i know how it is after that i was like oh no I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to just get an online bank. I'm using Revolut and it's super easy. I've been to China, Colombia, Brazil, everywhere. And I just pay by card. You, you can pay everything by card. And the best thing about it is you don't actually have to take out physical money of your currency to exchange it in the country you're traveling to. But you can just take that card and pay with that card it's actually more to your advantage to pay by card if i'm in brazil i barely have coins or like brazilian money on me i always just pay by card like every street vendor will pull out their card machine in brazil like so many of those countries are very digitalized it was the same when i was in china they're more digitalized than a lot of western countries so you so you can pay by card without any problems and that saves you actually a lot of money because you don't get those bad exchange rates the exchange rates are pretty accurate whenever i google them they're the same as the ones i get when i pay by card so they're very accurate you don't lose money actually exchanging physical notes because they take commissions obviously even if they say they don't but the the exchange rate is always very bad and, and you always end up losing quite some money and what you can do is also transfer a certain amount of money you need on that card to travel with so get yourself an online travel bank i use revolut and it's like one of the best you can sign up for free the link is in my bio travel hack number four number four is also something i started doing just last year and that's traveling with only carry-ons only carry-ons will also save you so much money of course and time because you don't have to check in your bags and nowadays with these prices with checked in bags 
before they used to be included with a lot of flights but nowadays they're not included anymore so last year i decided to travel to brazil for the first time with just a carry-on and initially it was just meant to be for a couple of weeks two to three weeks but i ended up staying longer i ended up staying there for three months and then going from there straight to colombia for another three months so i stayed six months with just a carry-on and after doing that i was like why did i ever travel with anything else because before i used to travel with so much luggage and baggage with a big uh check-in bag with, with a carry-on the uh, big travel bag like with so many bags and i didn't end up even using or wearing half of what i had brought so last year i saw that i don't need all that extra stuff the way i pack is that i pack light things of course when i go to countries that are warm i pack the lightest of things but also i buy a lot of things there if you have for example hair products you need why take your hair products i used to take all my hair products and take them and transport them but the hair products waste so much so i had to leave those and just really just take the essentials and then i would buy the things i need in the country so hair products you can get tons of really good hair products in brazil for example like why would you take your hair products from back home get them to brazil in brazil they have tons of very good hair products and for cheaper even and with a lot of clothes it's the same thing you can get like a swimmer sunscreen stuff like that you can get directly at your destination you don't really have to get everything before and i really recommend doing that if you especially plan to stay at a place for longer and the last but never the least travel hack is also one i do all the time and that's when you're looking for example on the website booking.com for hotels you might want to actually look at the hotel name and then google the hotel and actually go to their own website and a lot of times the rates on their own websites end up being much cheaper than the rates on booking.com so i always do that for every hotel i want to book just to check the availability i always go to booking.com first and then once i found a hotel i like i go and google that hotel's website 95 of the times it ends up being cheaper than i go through the hotel's website directly to book on there so those were the most important travel hacks i do all the time let me know if you have more travel hacks i'd love to hear them and i'll see you in my next video